<laughs> I hope you are ready for reacting to true story scary animation. Oh yeah, it's about to go down. And my heart rate is about to go up because um, yeah, these are scary. You already know what to do. Get your snacks, get your drinks, whatever you need. Popcorn, candy. Anything you could get from the pantry. Just go get it and bring it back here. And get your blankets because you know we gonna need it. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna, boy, you better get that out of here. And yeah, please just do it now. Click the subscribe button. It'll really help out the channel and it'll make me feel better about myself. Be sure to click the first link in the description below and check out MJV Animations. They're the ones that made these amazing animations we're about to watch. And finally, just comment down below something scary. You can put gorillas, you can put toilets, or you can put your mama. Let me know. And let's go! There used to be a time when I loved going on late night drives, but not anymore. I went to stay with my grandma when this incident happened. Ew. My grandma lived in the countryside, hence, after dark, life was pretty boring there. The nearest bar, or rather a small wooden shack, was an hour's distance. The neighborhood people were also old and solitary, so I was mostly on my own. So whenever I felt bored, I borrowed my grandpa's red Mustang and went for a drive after dinner. The joy of driving on the high road with no one else around relaxed me each time until I met a weird stranger. What? It was a warm Friday night. I picked up some beers from the small gas station and started on my late night strolling. I rolled the windows down and cool air brushed my face. Unlike the city, I had the full opportunity to drink and drive there, but I never sped too fast and always abided by the traffic lights. I was driving on the empty road enjoying my beer when I stopped at a red light. The empty highway stood before me. I looked around and realized how deserted the place was. I turned on the radio, hoping to find some music when suddenly my eyes went to the sidewalk. At some distance on my left stood a bushy tree. Under that tree, I could see a human figure standing and watching me. The Bro. shadow of the tree made the sight quite illuminating. I couldn't see the person clearly, but sure could feel his eyes on me. Feeling a bit weird by the silent watcher, I honked my horn just to make him realize I could see him too. No! I expected him to walk away hearing the car horn, but instead, he surfaced from the darkness. <coughs> he came out and stood right underneath the streetlights. It was a man, probably in his late fifties. He was dressed in a very weird way. There was a blue afro wig on his head. He wore a red tie with no shirt on, the heck? and a pair of shorts printed in the form of the American flag. He wore brown, murky boots. His excessive leg and body hair made him look grisly and gross. As if all this weirdness wasn't enough, he painted his entire face white with red paint circling his eyes, and he drew a distorted <gasps> red smile on his lips. Ugh. It seemed like he was going into a crazy parade on the 4th of July. He suddenly smiled <laughs> at me widening his creepy green eyes. Dry. I felt my stomach drop. His teeth had blood stains on them. God. I froze at that moment for a second and then saw the signal turn green. Go! I had to move, and this man was still standing there, waiting for me to pass him by. Feeling freaked out by this creepy behavior, I rolled up my window and started driving past him. The tension of the situation got into me so badly that when I was almost parallel to him, I let go of the clutch and the engine stopped. Yeah, Are you? My car stopped while he stood right next to me. Are you serious? I wanted to turn the engine on, but I don't know why. I became numb sitting inside the car. It felt like the man had cast a spell on my car to make it stop right next to him. Oh, you dummy. I kept staring at him when he stooped down and planted his face on my glass window. 
His eyes were evil. His smile looked even more distorted. In a creepy, squeaky voice, he said, Long live America! What? But you don't seem to be from this country. Now, I'm half European and half Asian. Inheriting from my dad, I look more Asian than European. So practically, his racist words hurt me. But I was so struck with fear that I couldn't say a word about this guy. My breathing got heavy. He smiled once again and then licked yeah. the glass in a very vile manner. Suddenly, I got my courage back, realizing he couldn't get inside the car because I already locked the doors. So I screamed back for the first time, saying, Get away from my car, you freak! Uh. Hearing my protest, the smile on his face got replaced by a vengeful anger. He opened his mouth wide and screamed at me like a f***ing psycho. What the heck? What the problem? Your mama? I'll tell you that, Mr. Who Don't Belong Here. <laughs> oh no you didn't. My tolerance limit finally gave up and I started the engine to drive away Run as over. fast as possible. My engine started and the man backed off a bit from the car. Suddenly, a cool idea came to mind. Drive! I was really angry at the moment, <coughs> and without thinking, I rolled down the window just a little bit so I could throw an empty beer bottle at the jerk. It all happened so quickly, but the man couldn't guess what was about to come at him. Oh. The beer bottle hit his face ah. and shattered into pieces. I didn't wait for a second and stormed out full speed. I only heard a painful scream, and from my rearview mirror, saw the man crouch down on the floor, hiding his bloody face into his palms. I can't explain how I reached home that night, but I was so terrified by this experience that for the next three days, I barely came out of the house. When my grandma noticed my odd behavior, she asked what was wrong. I didn't tell her and tried to shrug off the incident. On the fourth day, I was sleeping in my room when I heard voices downstairs. Out of curiosity, I came out and saw my grandma talking to a police officer. Oh no. I slowly came down the stairs when the police officer looked up, hearing my footsteps. The moment I saw his That's face, him. a cold shiver ran down my spine. He had green eyes like I had seen before. The weirdest things were the cut on his face which looked very fresh. He kept staring at me without blinking and then said to my grandma, this must be your grandson. Yes, he came to stay with me for a while. Bro. I see, well, America welcomes everyone. Excuse me? Just saying, this country has a place for all. Long live America. I'll see you around then. He left just like he came. My grandma stood in the doorway with a confused face. I asked her how she knew the man, to which she replied she had never seen him in the neighborhood. I felt something was very wrong, so I immediately went to the nearest police station and reported about this guy. I took my grandma with me. The cops assured me that they had no cops matching the features and they would look into the matter. When we came back home, we found the entire house vandalized. Someone broke <gasps> in and ruptured the entire house. The couch was stabbed several times, making the cotton underneath come out. The dishes were broken. Our entire kitchen was filled with Jeez. broken glass. On my grandma's bed, someone left a headless squirrel. The blood of the poor dead animal made the white bed sheet completely red. And in my room, someone wrote on the big white wall with blood. It read, You don't belong here, and I'll be back. The cops came and investigated our entire house. We had to stay in a motel for three days until the cops arrested the crazy guy. He was found living in the woods. Checking his background, 
the cops discovered that this man used to be an army general long back, and then he got suspended for his racial behavior with civilians. He was sent to a mental institution from which he escaped a few months back. He even injured a patrolling officer on the highway and then stripped him naked to steal his clothes. The cops found the officer tied inside an abandoned wooden cabin where the psycho took shelter after escaping from the mental institution. I'm so glad this man will be behind bars for the rest of his life. I also feel fortunate for saving myself and my grandma from this devil's grasp. No! Okay, don't go anywhere. Guys, guys, don't go anywhere. This next one's super short. Okay, just stick with me. Watch till the end. And let's go! Night shift alone at work. I'd been working the night shift at the gas station for almost a year at this point. It's not the best job, but it pays my cheap bills. The hours are long and the work is repetitive. I thought many times about quitting and finding work somewhere else, and this incident was my breaking point. It was a typical night at the gas station. I had just finished cleaning off the pumps and restocking the shelves when I saw the headlights of a car pulling into the lot. It was an old, beat-up car with tinted windows. As the car pulled up to the pump, I could see that there was only one person inside. He got out and started walking up to the door. Sorry, we're closed. It was a man, probably in his mid-30s. He had dark hair and was wearing a black leather jacket and looked like he hadn't slept in days. I greeted him with a smile and asked him if he needed any help. He didn't say anything, but just threw a 20 on the counter and went back out to fill up his tank. Okay. It was a bit rude, but that's normal when working at a gas station, especially late at night when nobody wants to talk. I watched out the window as he filled up his tank. But a couple minutes passed and he was still there with the pump in his car. I knew he only put $20 in, so he had to have finished a while ago. I waited another couple minutes, then I opened the door and started to say something, asking if he needed any help. But he just got back in his car and drove away. Ooh. I blew it off and went back inside the store, but as the night wore on, I started to feel like something was off. Bro. I don't know how else to describe the feeling. Nobody else was pulling in to get gas, and it was really quiet outside. Then, I heard a noise coming from the back of the store. <gasps> it sounded like a box falling off a shelf. I grabbed a flashlight and slowly made my way to the back of the store. Grab a bat! As I turned the corner, there was a man standing there going through our inventory. He was tall and skinny and looked like he hadn't showered in weeks. Ugh. I froze in fear, not sure what to do. The Run. man turned and saw me, and for a moment, we just looked at each other. Then he started to walk towards me, his eyes fixed on mine. Nope. I backed away slowly, putting my hands up as if to not mean any harm, but he kept coming towards me. I could smell alcohol in his breath, and I knew that he was dangerous. Money, where is it? Up your he butt. He said, slurring his words. I saw in one of his hands he had a switchblade, and with him being clearly drunk, I was really scared. I pointed toward the register, and he pushed me back to the counter. Ugh. As I was opening the till, the man wandered around the store, making his way to the liquor section. He stashed a few expensive bottles in his backpack then came back to the register. I put all the bills we had on the counter, being Dang. barely over a hundred dollars. The man looked at it, then looked at me. The fuck is this? Oh. I need more, man. He wasn't satisfied, but there was no more money to give. He flipped open his blade, <gasps> waving it around and yelling at me. I was sure he was going to jump the counter and beat me to death, but then, he suddenly swiped the cash and bolted out the door. My heart was pounding as I looked out the window, seeing that same beat up car from earlier. Oh. The man got inside and they drove off. 
The police came a few minutes later, responding to the emergency button I pressed while the man was browsing the booze, but they weren't too helpful right away. Thankfully though, the cameras outside the building were able to pull a license plate from the car, and four days later, I was informed that both men were caught. Apparently they were homeless and had stolen the car. They then went on a crime spree, robbing as many stores as they could, Jeez. mostly just of alcohol and money. I feel pretty lucky to have made it unharmed because their erratic behavior sent one worker to the hospital after an encounter with them. No. A couple weeks later though, I quit my job and moved to work in the day shift somewhere else. Yeah. You quit your job two weeks later? I would've quit my job that night. I wouldn't have even said anything. I just would've left, would've gone home, wouldn't have called in, not given a two weeks notice, uh, no. If you get robbed, it's time to go, man. Go work at McDonald's, don't nobody rob McDonald's? Hey, give me two Big Macs and a fry and an apple pie and a large Sprite, yeah. To go. But if you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and smack that like button. And yeah, I'ma see ya in the next one. Peace.